in our previous video, we spoke about the camera itself as an entity and an object, uh, and what sort of a few of the, the settings mean over here on the right hand side. What I'm going to talk about now is about camera placement and how to place your camera correctly in the scene so that you set up your objects in the correct manner so that you get a good result at the end of the day really. There's, there's, you know, there's a lot of things that photographers do um, that sort of help them to create good scenes. One of them is using the horizon here and the other one is also camera placement and how you sort of place this object in the scene, what angle I use and even what position it's in in relation to the actual view that it's going to uh, be rendered from. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do that's going to help me really do this is I'm going to come to camera, I'm going to left click on that and I'm going to turn on show safe frames. And you can see here that gives us a little box and if I wander outside of that that box it kind of cuts off the, the view. Now what this is, is this is the size of my render frame. Okay, So if I was to go to my render setup dialog here and we're going to play around with this in a little bit more detail in a moment. Uh, or in one of the other training videos rather, but if I click on that and I go to the common tab I can pick an output size here so I would normally work in HD pick an HD size, HD TV, and I'll just close that down you can see that this window has now changed in size to fit an HD aspect ratio but really all I'm showing here is just the cutoff okay, so that's just the cutoff for the screen what I need to do is to go in and click configure and go to safe frames and I need to turn on my title safe and my action safe okay and then I'm going to click OK now you'll notice here that what we've got is a blue line and an orange line as well as our yellow cutoff line the blue line is called the safe action frame. What that means is that when you have an animation or you're, you're moving the camera around, really everything in the screen should really stay within that blue line. And the orange one is the safe title area, you can see here. Now that won't really affect you if you are going to be um, just doing animations normally. But if you're doing any work for television or if you're doing work for a corporate client, you might find that they want to put text on and generally we say we put text in this area round about here towards the bottom and you'd normally put a, a, a graphic all the way across there called a, a lower third and then you would put your text in and your text would start about here though so for those of you who um, watch uh, the BBC News you'll find that their logo sits just about there so that's a little bit about how we sort of set this up to help ourselves but really what I need to talk about is a few of the shots that you will use to uh, tell your stories with and the position that the camera will be in and the position that your objects should be in. So if I come down here um, what you'll see is a photograph of New York uh, we've got a building here in the foreground obviously it's been fairly heavily colorized or somebody's taken two pictures but whatever, it doesn't really matter. What's important is the position that this object is in relation to the rest of the picture. Um, the, the building is in what's called the left hand third and if we look at the next picture you can see there's a grid that I've drawn on top of that image with some red lines and what this is showing me is the fact that this building is actually placed in the left hand third of the image. Now this is called the rule of thirds and what you try and do is you can see here the horizon line as well for this image is basically along the lower third so we've got a very pleasing sort of L shape and it's all to do with composition if you can line your objects up as, as best as possible with this sort of imaginary rule of thirds and this grid you'll actually find that things work an awful lot better and that your placement of, of certainly still images uh, and the, the surrounding area of whatever it is you're meant to be taking a photograph of or a render of will look a lot better it'll look a lot more composed so when we come back and look at the, the image as is in actual fact that's a nice picture it sort of everything sits together it all works the composition's good so yes it's worth paying attention to this rule of thirds so for me what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll rotate around the object until it's pointing into the 
scene. And I'll place them on the, on the third there on the side. And here, there we go. I've got the horizon line is at the, the top third up here. The bottom of the object is kind of towards the bottom third of the image. And the actual object itself is on the left hand side. It's on the left third. So if we were to take a, an image of that now, you can see that's actually placed quite nicely. It's not sort of placed slap bang just here. Uh, let's see, just there, right in the middle. That's That doesn't really do much for me at all. It doesn't really, although slap bang in the middle can work at some point, obviously. Um, you're much better off sort of just saying, well, actually what I'll do is I'll just rotate that around a little bit like that. And we'll place it in, oh, look, suddenly, I've got him sitting right on the bottom third, the horizon on the top third, and you've got the low, the left hand third here is the placement. So very simple, very easy. We've also got, when we're telling a story, there are three or four different types of shot that we use to tell a story with. So if I flick forward here, what we've got here is what's called a, a long shot and you can see the character, you can see the whole of the character, and you can see quite a bit of the scenery around him. You'll also find that this might be considered to be a long shot as well, if this was an animation. Uh, also known as establishing shots. So for example, we'd have a shot like this, and it would show you, you know, New York City, or it would show us our character surrounded by New York City. So it'd be very obvious we're setting the scene um, in that instance. As we come forward, we have this type of shot which is known as a medium shot and we've got sort of from the knees up to the top of the body I could fit two characters in here uh, and they could be quite possibly having a conversation with each other um, you can still show a lot of the background around them so you're still putting people in situ in a set but you've come in a little bit closer you've become a little bit more personal with them the next type of shot that we might use would be a close-up and this would be for conversations. So you can see there's a chap here. He's going to be having a conversation with someone who's just in front and to his left. Yep. So what you then do is you would flip a reverse angle. Um, and I can't really do that with this because it's Microsoft picture viewer. But you would have someone who's sort of here and they'd be pointing and looking in this direction. And then you'd be having a conversation between the two. So that's a close up. And in extreme cases, we have this, which is an extreme close-up. So here, what we're into is very much the looking at the, the actor's facial expressions. We're into a lot of detail. We're very, very close to them. And we can sort of, we can almost see what they're thinking. And using these sort of three or four different types of shot, so you know, the, the establishing shot, sort of a longer shot, a medium, a close-up, and an extreme close-up, we can start to tell a story, yeah? So if we look at films uh, like The Matrix, for example, you have a scene where Morpheus fights Neo in a dojo, but it starts off as being very much a sort of an, an over-the-shot, shoulder medium shot of, of Morpheus, and you can't tell what type of a room he's in. It's only until there's a, a, a gong that bangs, and then we go to a long shot of the entire room that then establishes the set that they're in and actually tells us that they're in a dojo. So this is how these shots are used. So the next time you're watching television, the next time you're watching a film, just spend a few minutes to sort of look and start to recognise what type of shot is being shown and what order they're being shown in and how they're being used. There's a lot of information as well on the internet um, about cinematography and about cinemagraphic techniques and hopefully this has just given you a really good introduction to all of that.